Good morning. Good morning. How are you doing today? It's, uh, it's good to see you guys on here, whether you are watching live or you're watching the recording. Uh, you guys know I'm always excited about Wednesday. Uh, Wednesdays, we talk about wealth building and money. Right, and I don't know about you guys, but I, uh, I think that this is really a great opportunity for us to get our money mindset right, to get our wealth mindset right. Last week, I gave you guys a definition on wealth, right? Uh, and it was Ben Kinney's definition on wealth. What he said was that wealth was the ability to do what we want, when we want, with who we want. Um, and I love that definition. And we also, a couple of you guys shared some of the definitions that, that you guys have around, um, around wealth. And you guys shared, you know, just some of those things that, that you guys felt. And a lot of that had to do with the time that we spend, right? Who we choose to spend it with, the things that we're able to do without really worrying about, about money. And so we're going to talk about a little bit of a different definition about wealth today right? You guys know wealth and, and our money mindset, it's a really broad topic. And so it makes sense that there's a lot of different ways that we have the potential to look at it. One of those has to do with passive income. Uh, this definition actually comes from someone else. Uh, her name is Lori Bolin. She's also a, a, um, you know, a, a kind of influencer within, within Keller Williams. Uh, she runs a lot of kind of online lead gen uh, and has multiple streams of income herself. And when she talks about wealth, she talks about it in a, in a different way. The way that she talks about wealth was when our passive income, right? When our passive income surpasses our active income. So what does that mean? In order for us to really talk about this idea of passive income and then on the flip side of that, this idea of active income, what, is, what does that look like? What does that mean? Well, let's talk about that, right? Our active income is the income that we make by doing activities, right? By continuously doing the activities that, that we need to be doing. So if you're working a job, active income is the income that you get from your paycheck. If you're out showing properties and you're, you're closing properties and you move a sale forward or you get a listing and you move that forward, the active income is the income that you get as a result of those activities. Now let's talk about passive income, right? Where does passive income come from? Passive income, it's not to say that there's no action required in order for us to generate passive income, but passive income is gonna come from something that maybe we already did Right? We already did those activities, and now we're getting um, income as a result of those past activities, and that income is generally coming in uh, passively. Right, That income is coming in passively. So a couple examples, right? a couple examples of, of what that could look like. Uh, passive income could be money that you make from an investment property, right? You invest in that particular property and uh, you go out and buy it. You start getting rental income that comes in. Now, there's still a little bit of activity there. You still have to manage the property. You still have to make sure that it's leased out with the tenant, all of that good stuff, right? But at the same time, you're getting that passive income coming in, right? Um, that's one way. Stocks, right? Stocks is another opportunity for us to have passive income. Now, stocks and, and even with investing in property, you have to calculate the risk, right? Because there's always a risk with passive income. We could also lose that passive income, but the money that we get uh, as a result of, of the stock going up, it's our money working for us, right, uh, as well. So that's another method of potential passive income. Um, other methods of, of passive income, profit share. Right, profit share is a method of passive income. It's, it's the result of us doing some type of activity uh, at some point that's gonna allow us then to, to make income in the future. So profit share is kind of the no investment side where you know we potentially refer in an agent, they happen to join Keller Williams. If they have production uh, within the future and the company is profitable, profitable within that month, then you earn a portion of, of profit share. 
right? Um, other things that also produce passive income. So we talked a little bit about stocks. We talked a little bit about um, investment properties, right? Profit, uh, profit share. There's also opportunities that exist for passive income with other businesses, right? Other businesses um, or having teams being a business owner of another business. Uh, getting to the seventh level of having a real estate team, right? Getting to the seventh level of having a real estate team where you've stepped out of the role of CEO and the team is working without you, that becomes a passive income profit center, right? That becomes a passive income profit center. Doesn't necessarily start that way, right? So two definitions that we've gone through of wealth so far, last week was very much wealth as the idea that we can do what we want, when we want, with who we want, and then this secondary element of wealth, which is the idea that it, we achieve wealth when our passive income surpasses that active income, right? I don't know about you guys, but I love the opportunity to go and do uh, get more passive income, right? We all wanna be making money while we sleep. That's a great opportunity um, for us to do that. And, and part of getting into that place is we have to have a financial reality check of where we are now, right? Of where we intend to be uh, in, in the future. What are the elements that we wanna add into our business as, as passive income opportunities? What does that look like? So what I wanna talk about today, um, aside from just this definition, is this idea of being uh, a student of wealth building and really having our, our financial, um, a financial reality check, right? A financial reality check. Um, a lot of times what happens? We don't look at our money because we are nervous about what we're gonna see. And that's okay, right? We wanna, we, we understand that maybe that's where, where we're at. And there's a lot of clarity that comes from being very clear with our money and tracking um, our net worth. So I'm gonna be sharing some resources with you guys that include things like a budget and an expense tracker, right? Uh, that include things like a, a, um, a net worth tracker, right? Now there's a lot of different tools and softwares that are out there. So I'm dropping in the comment right now, this is gonna be a budget and expense tracker for you guys. So you can see that in the chat box, right? And it's gonna allow you to make a copy. And then we're gonna also talk about um, a simple net worth tracker, right? So what does that mean when we have, uh, when we're tracking our budget and we're tracking our net worth? I'm dropping that in really quickly. Okay, there we go. So, so two trackers that I just uh, dropped in there for you. A couple of things that we need to look at when we're having kind of a, what I would call a financial reality check, when we're really, you know, looking at our finances and having this understanding. Now I wanna put it into perspective, right? I wanna put it into perspective. Your net worth could be positive, it could be negative, it could be nothing, right? And that's okay. The goal here is that we can identify where we're at so that we can set a plan in place for where we're going. Right? There's gonna be a couple exercises um, that are around this. The goal here is that we have an understanding of the following. What are our expenses? So what are expenses? Expenses are gonna be things like your bills, right? your mortgage or your rent, uh, things like groceries. All of those things have to do with expenses. Then there's debt, right? We gotta track our debt. Our debt can be things like, uh, if you have a mortgage, what's left on the mortgage? right? What's left on it? That's debt. Um, that's good debt though, right? That's positive debt. Uh, credit card debt, right? Credit card debt. Uh, student loan debt. All of these things are going to be part of that, that debt piece. And then we want to track our income, right? Income. What is the income that we have? And this would be any source of income that you have. Also your investments, right? Any investments that you have, you want to make sure that you're tracking that as well. You're going to track uh, your assets, so what are assets, things that, things that uh, we own outright, right, are gonna be our assets. And then our liabilities, right? We also wanna be able to track our liabilities. So a couple things that fall in the asset category, uh, if you have a 401k, right, that could be considered an asset. 
um, if you own a home, that could be considered an asset, right? Liabilities, um, if you have a lot of debt on a car payment, right, that could be considered a liability. So you wanna add those up and subtract. Um, you're gonna add up all the assets. You're gonna subtract out the liabilities. What's left is, is what becomes your net worth. Now, the goal here is to do this every month, right? Every month. And here's the thing. I don't want you to do an activity like this and then get nervous because it doesn't necessarily show you what you want it to, right? That's okay. It's not always gonna show us exactly what we want. In fact, um, this exercise, when I learned it, um, I've learned it a couple times over the years, but one example that really stood out to me was um, somebody who now, right, is, is a multimillionaire, right, is a multimillionaire, said his net worth in 2019 was negative half a million, right? Was negative half a million after the financial collapse in 2008. And he said it took him years to get back to a zero net worth. But because he tracked it, he was able to make positive strides towards moving the ball forward. And now he's a multimillionaire, right? So there's, there's a lot of opportunity here when we start paying attention and stop fearing our money, right? When we stop fearing um, that wealth, money is not scary, right? Money is, is positive. Money can help to support us in the things that, that we want to do. And we want to be able to grow, uh, grow our, our network. Now, the next exercise, and you guys have seen me talk about this before, right, is the highlighter exercise. We also want to look at, are there expenses that we don't necessarily need, right? So once we kind of have an idea of what our net worth is, and we really start looking at, you know, our expenses and kind of getting into more of that reality check. If you were to print out your bank statements, I don't have a yellow highlighter with me, right? But to have, um, th you know, the three highlighters with you, one of those being red. Now, what is red or pink, right? Pink highlighter. But imagine this is red is the expenses that I don't need and I don't want, right? It's when we accidentally subscribe to something and we forgot all about it and it's something that we don't even use anymore. We all do it, right? We all do it. I, I did this exercise and I found a subscription to um, a company that I haven't used that app in probably about six months and yet I paid them $10 a month right? So it was $60 that had I been tracking a little bit more closely, I would have identified very quickly, right? I would have identified very quickly. So that's your red. Yellow, I don't have my yellow highlighter right now, but our yellow highlighter is going to be around tracking those things that, well, maybe they're optional, right? You don't need them, but you want them, right? You don't necessarily need them, but you want them. That could be things like, um, so I'll give you an example. For me, Netflix and Amazon Prime, right? I don't need them, but I want them. So I highlight those in yellow and I might ask myself the question, do I need both, right? Do I really need both? Um, Audible, right? Audible. Uh, I have a subscription to Audible because I buy a lot of books, right? Uh, so looking at them, I'm like, do I need this? Do I need um, this tier? Right, so what happens, sometimes we have expenses and we don't realize that we upgraded on something and we don't need it anymore. So, so what happens on Amazon Prime? All of a sudden you can go buy different channels, right? You're like, hey, now not only do I have a subscription to Amazon Prime, I have Showtime and I have, you know, whatever else um, you're getting because you had a show that came out you wanted to watch and then you forgot to cancel, right? You forgot to cancel. So those things are gonna go into yellow. And then in green are the things that we need to be spending money on that are not optional. They're expenses that we need. Mortgage, rent, water, power, um, the trash, internet, cape, internet, maybe cable, cell, um, any repairs, right? If we have any debt that we have to pay, those monthly payments, um, auto payment, car insurance, um, gas, right? All, groceries, all of those things that we need, right? We need them but we don't necessarily uh, want them. And then that's gonna help us to total out what are our annual expenses um, and what are our, our um, just general expenses. I'm gonna be dropping another worksheet for you guys as well that will help you kind of go through this. 
but you really just want to kind of do the math on it. This is going to help with the um, budget tracker as well, right? Because then we want to really look at all our debt, right? We need to look at our debt too. So whatever that debt might be, um, we want to make sure we kind of have that analysis of it. And then we want to look at our current streams of income. All of that is going to give us the opportunity to see um, our net worth, right? It's going to give us the opportunity to see our net worth. So you can put that into the software that's going to allow you to track it, right? It's going to allow you to track it. Now, what I really like about um, the net worth trackers is, is as you're going through the exercise, I want you to think about, you know, what is, what am I learning? What do I learn between my required and my optional expenses, right? What I learned is I'm a subscriber. <laughs> I'll go and I, I subscribe to something that I don't necessarily need um, because I want it. And if I stop using it, sometimes I forget about it. I know we've all done that, right? Um, even on, on the iPhone, right, or, or Google store, you could accidentally subscribe to things and we forget about them. We stop using them. And if we're not watching that, then what happens? It becomes a leak, right? It becomes a little bit of a financial leak for ourselves. That's, that's big, right? And then you want to learn, what did I learn about my net worth, right? What am I learning about my net worth? Maybe you're learning that, hey, I have a little bit of, I have some debt, but some of this debt is good debt, right? Or, or I have some debt and you know what? I, I need to work on getting this particular debt paid off. And so any additional supplemental income that I get is going to go towards getting this paid, right? Um, and then you want to write down, what's the goal? What's the goal? If the net worth number is not something that you're happy with, right? It's not something that you're happy with. Then what is the net worth goal one year out, three years out, five years out, right? What is that net worth goal? And what needs to happen to get you there? We have to know what it is, right? You guys have heard me talk about, this is almost like our GPS. This is why we use um, an economic, what we call the economic model when we're looking at your business. Because if you know your net worth needs to be X, right? Now we can look at, okay, what do you want your profit to be over the next year from your real estate business? Now we can reverse engineer, build your economic model out and really get to the activities that you need to get to, right? in order to move the business forward, in order to move your net worth up, right? In order to move your net worth up. So some of the questions around that is once you set that goal, right? Once you set that initial goal, then it becomes, what can I do to reduce my expenses immediately, right? How do we reduce our expenses right away? Um, how much more income do I need to create in order to save more, right? What debts or liabilities should I focus on, on paying off first, right? Now, I'll give you guys a hint on that one. We do something called the snowball effect, right? The snowball effect means that you set an amount uh, that you're gonna put towards your debt, right? And instead of spreading it out, you don't spread it out. You never spread it out, right? If you've got, two credit cards, it doesn't matter that one has a smaller amount than the other one. What matters is which one has the highest interest rate, right? What matters is which one has the highest interest rate because that's the one that's losing you more money, right? So whatever debt you have, you don't just wanna look at the debt, you wanna look at those interest rates. And if you have an extra $500 or an extra $1,000 in that month to pay uh, towards your debt, you pay towards the item that has the highest rate of interest, right? The highest interest rate. That's, that's the way um, you can snowball it. That's the way, you know, you, you can start um, moving that forward. Now, of course, if something's going to adversely affect you, um, like you're going to get a late hit on, on your credit report or something like that, obviously you should be paying your minimum payments on everything, right? And any extra, uh, that's the snowball effect goes towards what has the highest interest rate to kind of move you down, right? Little, little tricks like that, that, that are going to be uh, helpful for you.
So here's the thing. In order to increase our net worth, we must spend less than we earn, right? We must spend less than uh, we earn. And then as we grow that, as we grow that, and as we uh, analyze this a little bit better, this just gives us more clarity around our own money and around having the positive money mindset. Now, again, remember, our self-talk is really important. So I don't want you to go into an exercise like this and, and um, speak negatively to yourself right? This is where that, that old saying of, if you see a penny, right? What was the saying? I see a penny, pick it up and all day I'll have good luck, right? That was a positive piece is any money that's coming in. We have to have immense gratitude for, right? We have to have that experience of gratitude uh, because that helps to shift our money mindset, right? That helps to shift our wealth mindset, looking at things like our budget and our expenses and tracking this and doing this exercise around really understanding our net worth, right? Our net worth, um, this gives us more control, right? It's just about giving us more clarity and more control because the activities that we do on the daily basis, when we're talking about lead generation, when we're talking about moving our business forward, there's a lot more clarity if we have an understanding of, hey, I need to create this much income so that I can grow my net worth to X within the next five years, right? So that I can pay off X within the next year. So I'll give you guys an example. One of the things that I did, so I've done this exercise um, a couple of times and I do this now on a monthly basis. I wasn't before, um, but I do this now on a monthly basis. So even, even myself, right? We all grow before I would do it at least once a year, at least um, probably about, I would say I was doing it maybe twice um, or three times a year, right? Where I'd go look at my expenses, I look, uh, I do have a debt calculator. I have my expense sheet um, and I have my net worth tracker with everything kind of built out on it. One of the things that I started looking at is I said, okay, one of the goals that I have, uh, I had shared with you guys, I want to buy another, a fourplex in a, um, next year, right? I want a fourplex. That's just what I ended up wanting. Um, and I know that I have my good debt and I have my bad debt, right? So I'm working this year, I looked at it and I said, all right, this bad debt here, I need to pay that off, right? We're gonna pay that off over the next, over the next 12 months, right? And what I needed to look at is, okay, I have this income that's coming in from these income streams. Now, what additional income do I need to create in order to not have to use any of my regular income to pay that debt, right? How many additional um, referrals so I need to give out in order to pay off that debt. And so I did the math on it, right? And I figured out what that amount was. And now any supplemental income that comes from that, that goes towards that, right? Because we set a goal, there's clarity there. And I figured out what was the supplemental, um, how many additional transactions did I need to generate for referrals in order to get where I needed to be? For you, it's gonna be a little different. For you, it's gonna be how many transactions are we looking at, right? In order to be where you need to be. So it, it's um, a little bit of a deeper exercise, you guys. This takes a little bit of work, right? And it takes being open with yourself around creating uh, that, that clarity and being open to what the numbers are going to tell you, right? Being open to what the numbers are going to tell you, got it? So uh, I'm going to post it again because I know some of you guys jumped on after and didn't get a chance to see uh, the two links, the one I just posted, that is the, I believe that's the net worth tracker. And now I'm posting that budget tracker as well. I will make sure that I post those in the comments uh, as well so that you guys have it. But I highly, highly recommend spend a little time and do this exercise, right? Spend a little time, do this exercise and think about what it's going to allow you to learn about yourself and your money. And if you have a family, it's great to do this with your family right? It's really great. If you have a spouse, then it might be something where you're tracking um, both of your net worth, right? Where you're tracking it as a family. So, so um, that's it for today, guys, right? A little bit on money and wealth building. But with that, I will see you guys again tomorrow morning. You guys have a good one.